what's your story? Well, hello, my name is Jonathan Bertrand, and I am the founder of the Global Touch Foundation, creator of social media awareness and the terms social media dependency disorder, triple conscious theory, and where we introduce the social media persona, as well as social media awareness. Now, people may be wondering, what is Jonathan's story? You may see the blogs, you may see the write-ups from news stations, articles from college, as well as different universities around the country. But people never really know the story from the source. They only hear rumors and speculations. So one of the things that I would like to cover is the beginning and how social media awareness came to be and how we began to develop what we call the social media awareness industry. Now, for many that may not know, I used to be bullied and it started online, hence social media awareness. But I was in a daze, and I mean in a daze where when we first started using social media, it was used for ranking friends like on MySpace. It was also used to make everyday statuses where we didn't really know the implications of our post. So I was in high school, freshman year, didn't really know exactly much about myself other than people followed me on social media, MySpace and Facebook at the time. I had a Blackberry and then a razor. So you can think back then you'd have to scroll. A lot of effort was put into typing the big keyboard, full body keyboard. Now, for most, you may be thinking, well, why does a teenager have a phone? Well, I'm an identical twin. My parents let us have a phone. And to some degree, we had to show some type of responsibility. Well, at the age, we had access to the internet. And not many people covered exactly what the internet did or how it affect mental and behavioral health. So in my freshman year of high school, I ended up dealing with a lot of cyberbullying. And if you don't know what cyberbullying is, cyberbullying is where bullying happens online or in the online space, where it's no longer physical. And the difference between physical bullying and cyberbullying is cyberbullying is more psychological, 100% psychological but where you can let it go, go home, and you don't have to worry about physical retaliation, cyberbullying is all psychological. So depending on what you post, what you post has an impact. What you say brings in other people onto the comments. And these type of things, what, 10 years ago, weren't actually talked about. So it was one of those things where you're introducing these type of conversations that Hey, social media causes mental and behavioral health issues, depending on the usage. And then you got bullies using social media, which could be anybody. But the term is now used so loosely. And being 15 years old, being someone that really didn't understand social media, I let it affect me. I let it control my everyday life. I let it affect mood swings, my associations in person as well as online. And I ended up treating social media like a third person, meaning it felt like I didn't need anybody else. And I used that as a way to cope, and but also use it as a way to vent. Now, when you mix the two, you end up getting what I call the truth. And eventually the truth reveals itself within the post. And I ended up getting Baker Active in 20, what was it, 12, 13? And I was, I ended up having to go to UBC, University Behavioral Center near University of Central Florida. And one of the counselors was like, Mr. Bertrand, why are you here? And I remember distinctly telling this person, social media, because of social media, it's like crack cocaine. Mind you, disclaimer, I've never done that before, but let me make it very clear. From the symptoms that I've researched, it's very similar to dependency, um, itchy feeling, seeing things, and leading on to other disorders or mental and behavioral health problems. So while I was in this facility for a couple of days, um, I found myself exposing the reality and the problems that I held in for so many years and past traumas, etc. Now, for most people nowadays, they say, well, social media doesn't cause mental and behavioral health issues. And we ended up in the process of addressing the mental and behavioral health problems, developing what we call social media dependency disorder. And in the process of developing these awarenesses, 
in the process of developing these type of new understandings, these new terms that challenge the current at the time medical community, as well as current laws and other beliefs, we had to put a name to the issue. Ended up causing controversy in the process from what, 2010 to 2014. And then ended up going to college um, where I was no longer bullied online, but had to find myself again. And I took social media to the masses. And I knew that in college, I went to Florida A&M, FAMU, home of the Rattlers, go Rattlers. And I basically had to let people know this needed to be done. So in 2014, ended up developing this movement called the Social Networking Effect, What's Your Story? Because I also knew everyone had a story. I knew everyone had a beginning and everyone had an end. But also everyone had a social media persona and a life online that some expose and some don't. Some hide and some let the masses know straightforward and upfront. And the people that sometimes have the biggest voice aren't always heard. And sometimes people with the least voice is heard the most. I know it sounds very ironic and what is it? Cliche, but, but it happens. So we ended up creating What's Your Story, the movement, the Post Responsibly campaign in 2015, ended up going national, visiting Brazil in 2016. And since then, we have created a movement that has reached across the globe as far as Dubai, England, Germany, Costa Rica as of what, two weeks ago. Um, and we've done international films such as The Toxicity of Social Media with Richard Grennan reaching over 200,000 people, winning two awards. We've had university research studies published as master's references at the College of Creative Studies, done affiliate programs with MIT, as well as having references from military personnel as all the way up to officer, as well as non-commissioned officers. And we set the tone by even working with Addiction Coaching Academy in Miami with one of the first courses in the country addressing social media addiction and dependency. So we let people know that what we do and my experiences have not only created what we call social media awareness, but we also created the solution to the problem. And we also let people know that remember, one post can change the mind, one comment can change a generation. So social media caused me to be Baker acted because one, I did not realize that what you post online can be tracked, can be used against you. And when you're in high school, elementary school, middle school, you don't really know or care about what you post. You just post it and just let it be. So years ago, um, there's this thing called the Baker Act Law, where the Baker Act Law basically by law, if you were deemed a threat by somebody else or to yourself, cops can pick you up and take you. And that's just the law that's here in the state of Florida. So it's one of those things where not every state has it. Some people I've talked to, they know nothing about it. Um, but in the state of Florida, that is something that is is happening and does happen. And I used it because um, I knew social media was like an outlet. Positive, it depends on the way I used it and how it was used. But for me, it was more so negative in the early years. And that was when around I was 15, 16 years old, didn't really care much, had no emotion towards feelings. And social media took that key part away from me that normally you'd have interactions, you'll express yourself to other people face to face. Um, and to be Baker Act, it was probably the best thing to do because. Um, it allowed me to reevaluate some things and really process why I was in the position I was in. And yes, being Baker Act, it means you get institutionalized um, for 72 hours plus, depending on your case. So I say that was a big reason why it was because of the way I posted, not posting responsibly, and one, um, making threats and whatnot to people and close family members that normally you normally would never say. 
Um, so yeah, it, it helped to my benefit because it allowed me to address things that normally I would not address. So the common question is, at what age did I develop social media awareness? Well, I was working on a anti-cyberbullying modification law, um, where basically we were trying to show that the law that was in place in 2012 here in Florida called the Johnson Act was a double standard, meaning that it protected the bully as well as the person that could perpetrate an action after the bully is told not to contact the person they're bullying. So in a way, I knew that laws, I knew new type of policies and awareness had to be created. But one of the biggest problems was, was that there was no awareness for social media. So in 2014, I officially decided while I was in college to make this a public conversation. And from 2014 to 2016, we basically got a team together and we developed what we called the social media awareness industry, finding individuals, whether sponsors, donors, companies, organizations, public to private, that would be interested in aiding in the awareness of social media. Now, for many people, this is controversial because you're talking about something never done before. And I knew that at a very young age, we would draw all types of crowds because one, young, two, millennial, three, we experienced it firsthand, not secondhand. And starting at 15 years old isn't always an easy feat. So I had to find people that were about that life, challenging the status quo, but also willing to step out their comfort zone and see the reality, not the perception. The common question is, why is this important to me? And why did I develop something so complex, so global, so costly? Because when you save a life, when you can comfort a parent, when you can educate a grandparent on how social media affects their young one or how a marriage is affected, you can't put a price to that. And just to see a smile, knowing that you impacted somebody's life, knowing that big corporations have yet to target these type of conversations, and knowing that you're developing something for the social media user is way more impactful than a dollar amount, way more impactful than a recognition or award. And to know that you had a lasting effect on somebody's life, knowing that that post could change their family, that post can change their life, that post can save a life, that post could take a life. It's very powerful. And to be someone that can cater content to the person in need, that keeps me going. Because trust me, it's costly. But knowing that my hard earned money, knowing that donors money is being put into something that people really can't take, is an experience of a lifetime. And I always urge people that I wouldn't do this if I wasn't able to have the fulfillment. It's not about money. It's about the impact. A very popular question that I've been getting lately is, where do I see social media awareness going after 10 years in the game after 10 years of building something that wasn't, being told that what we're doing is just an anomaly, it's just a conversation, it's just a movement that will fade away because it's bigger than anybody can comprehend or imagine. And where I see it going in the next five years, the next 10 years, is that social media awareness will be a global conversation. Social media awareness will be a conversation that corporations will be pushing. Billions of dollars will be invested and donated to this type of cause. And knowing that we are setting the tone for what the awareness is, the disorder, and the persona behind the need for social media awareness is. I can only say that from what we've been able to do without mainstream attention, 
without major publication, without major endorsements, without major sponsors is phenomenal. And I know every household, every user of social media at some point in time will eventually come across social media awareness. Because with the platform, with the negative, you always got to have the positive. And with anything, it's always good to be aware of what you're doing online. Advice that I have for those currently struggling with mental health issues online is that one, seek help, suicide hotline, or go get therapy. And nothing's wrong with that, because I, for one, know that when you post online, as we talk about with the triple conscious theory, is that you eventually show your true colors. And it may not be in ways that you think. It could be by a post, a like, a comment. That could raise red flags, and depending on the state you're in, um, it could cost you everything. And I would rather know that we develop something that will educate you to seek help, as well as to know the know the signs, know the triggers, but to also know that we're here to help you be aware of why you use it and what for. Now, many people may think this is a joke, but it's not. It's reality. People do have mental health issues. Social media does cause problems, addiction and dependency. And we're here to let you know, getting help is not a problem. It's a solution. So who's my inspiration? I would say I have a mentor named Marville. And one of my inspirations is the reason for him being an inspiration is because one, he's about the people. He's about understanding that what you do for people isn't always about the money. And when you do have the money, eventually it becomes about impact and influence. And not all influence is good and not all impact is good. But when you meet like-minded people who alter your thinking, who understand that you may not have the capital, meaning money, but you do have the ideas and you do have the resources at your fingertips. It's what you do with it. And I can say he is someone that challenged me to see life differently, um, but also to have faith in myself that just because you don't have big needs behind you now don't mean they won't come. Or doesn't mean that the person that can connect you isn't right around the corner. Keep, keep persistent, keep consistent, and execute every time. And remember, failing isn't always bad because sometimes when you fall, there's always going to be someone to help pick you up. It's all about how you approach it. And I can say that's why I think Marbu is um, someone that I respect heavily and someone that I definitely, um, you know, one of these days as a social media mentor, as I would say, um, would definitely like to meet face to face because his kind words, his efforts in leading me in the right way have definitely paid off in ways money could never, even if I paid him or he paid me. So I just want to say thank you for that. And um, yes, can't wait to join you. So what would I change about social media to make it more mental health friendly is, once again, adding the awareness. None of these companies talk about awareness. There's stipulations involved that censor people and questions your First Amendment rights. And one of the biggest issues is that, yeah, they censor people, but they don't strategically address the user. They put general guidelines, but yeah, people may say there's billions of users, it's just impossible. No, you got access to every single account in the world that has and is on your server. So I always challenge people or executives that I meet in the space for social media is that if you develop a little step-by-step -step guideline once a month, put a notice out there to all the users, um, partner with the other companies so it's cross-branding, so everybody is kind of like in on it. Um, it doesn't hurt your company to be, you know, corporate social media responsible. And I say corporate social media responsible because you have corporate social responsibility, but why not corporate social media responsibility? but in the online space. So I just remind people that, you know, if you're going to be on social media 
as a corporation, target that area. It's a big market, trust me.